Welcome to Three Things I Know For Sure, where we talk to the most amazing experts on the planet about three things they know for sure. I'm talking 100% unadulterated facts in their opinion. Of course, I don't know anything about what they're going to say or their topics they're going to be discussing. So for me, it's a surprise. I'll hear it when you hear it. Today on the show, we have a wonderful guest. Her name is Joanna Schwartz, and she is a brilliant professor of law at UCLA's School of Law. And there she teaches a civil procedure and a variety of other courses on police accountability and public interest. And in 2015, ladies and gentlemen, she won UCLA's Distinguished Teaching Award. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited to have Joanna Schwartz join me on the show today. How are you, Joanna? Wonderful. I am, I am great. How are you? I'm so glad to be here. I'm thrilled you're here. I will admit to you and to the audience that we did not, in fact, meet in passing or perhaps in any legal uh, <laughs> proceeding. Uh, we met in camp. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it was theater camp. I do have a picture here of, of the two of us together at 13 years old. Um, it's an amazing. Come on. How, how can you not fall in love with this, these people? <laughs> so, Joanna, I'm interested in hearing your topic to, for today, uh, and I, I am I'm excited because I don't get a whole lot of legal folks uh, coming on, uh, so it's it's going to be different. But I'm hoping I'm hoping it'll be amazing. Um, tell me your topic for today. Okay, well, understanding that you don't have so many legal eagles, you know, watching well, your you show, know, well, they could be here. They could be here. You're not among them. Okay. So I'm thinking about like, what, how do you know about the law? Right. And, and what I was thinking is you might know what you know about the law from courtroom dramas, like say a few good men. Oh yes. Cause right? I can handle the truth. Uh, so that is, that's well, what I know. Try to handle this truth. <laughs> I think a few good men get, gets at least three things wrong oh. about the law and lawyering. I see where you're going with this, Joanna. You want to do, see? so it's three things you know for sure about. What a few good men gets wrong. Oh God, I'm going to be so disappointed to hear all these. Okay, so I I'm think sorry. that that is the perfect example of an actual regular old trial that just happens normally. So yeah. it's, is it the, is it not? To... Well, no. And, and, okay. And I should say, I mean, these are things that other courtroom dramas get wrong too. Oh, but you, okay, great. You can, so you we'll can extrapolate. See. What's your first thing you know for sure? The first thing I know for sure is that a lot of the most important things in a legal case happen outside the courtroom. Okay. Mm. So, I mean, you see Tom Cruise, like, thinking through yes, yes, strategy. There was a, he was in the apartment and he's, I, I can play it so they can see it. This is Joe Galloway. I need to secure a witness. Oh, yeah. Anyway, he also Matthew said that Andrew Jessup's Mark lying about the transportation the off the base. Jessup Andrew said that six the next morning was the first flight Santiago could have left on. Markinson says there was a plane that left seven hours earlier. That was impressive. Did you get what I said about the flight? Yes. And they're working out a topic, but they're not in the courtroom. So is That's that right. correct? That is, that is right. But then like, if you were doing a, an accurate reflection, you would have that scene be like 75% of the movie. <laughs> That's a very boring movie, Joanna. I don't want to- That's a boring oh. movie. Well, I mean, and there'd also be like looking, combing through documents and there would be on reading, the phone- Reading, a lot of reading. <laughs> It's, it, I, you can understand why, like that, that might've been the initial pitch for the movie and what you yeah. understand why they were like, can we cut that down to just maybe like <laughs> one There's scene? Like maybe 20 seconds of reading and more <laughs> of Tom Cruise running. I get it. Okay. That's, that's a, I, you know what? I will admit that even in marketing, there's not all the highs and the, uh, that's all constant highs. There's actual reading and investigation and interrogation and, if you were just to highlight the key moments, it'd be less. You're right. So I'll give exactly. you, I'll stipulate that that's this, in fact, can translate to all careers, perhaps. Exactly. You got to have your vegetables before <laughs> you have your dessert, right? Oh got it. All right. Number two. All right. Okay. You re you're sitting down. That's good. I'm, I'm sitting down. <laughs> yes. Number two is that even in the courtroom, the kind of dramatic scenes that you see in A Few Good Men are very rare in real life. Oh, so, wait, you're gonna so tell like, me it's an impossible you scene? You can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. I, I don't think that that interaction would 
ever happen in a real courtroom. That's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do. Object! And when it went bad, you cut questions. these guys loose! Your Honor, you I'm have more inside the contempt. bony transport. Your Honor, you doctored the logbook. Damn it, Kathy! You coerced the doctor. Consider Not yourself in contempt. contempt. Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! I'm sorry. That is so disappointing. Never? Well, I mean, look, there are exciting moments. I mean, in the OJ trial, there were exciting moments. There was, you know, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. There was trying on the glove itself. I mean, there can be aha moments in a trial, but the whole notion that that the lawyers would be, or the lawyer and the witness would be screaming back and forth, you can't handle the truth. That's, that's just not, that's oh. not happening. That's not happening. Okay. You probably, that's probably sounds reasonable. Like, why would you be yelling? There'll be maybe badgering the witness. Would that, would that come up? Is that the, is that, did I, did I nail the legal and argument there? You can have an objection that someone's badgering, that the, the, the lawyer's badgering the witness. I don't even know. That kind of seemed like the witness was badgering the lawyer at that, <laughs> at that point in the, in the case. In number three, Joanna. So you're not going to like this one either. It's another. It's a. It's yet another buzzkill. But um, judges don't speak in the way with the kinds of catchphrases that you hear in movies. It's obvious, or maybe this just flows logically from the fact that you don't have moments like you can't handle the truth. But judges are very rarely, you know, pounding the table with their gavel. Oh, screaming, ordering this is gut wrenching. No, so, like, like you. No Utes. There was no Utes. <laughs> no Utes. No, um, you know, look, counsel, you're skating on very thin ice. But Ooh, I'll allow it. That doesn't happen ever. I don't. I no. It really doesn't. You, <laughs> judges like banging their gavel, up and down. Like, order in the court. Order in the court. That Never. really doesn't happen. Although, I want to leave you though with one funny little uh, counter piece okay, of counter. Okay, I'm ready for that one. I appeared before um, Jerry Shinlin, who is Judge Judy's husband, and he did say some like pretty kooky things. The, the one I remember the most, this is from back in the 90s, kooky, way before like, Judge kooky, Judy. Like a judge on, he's on the, he's on the, he's he was a criminal court judge in the Bronx in the 90s. And uh, I saw him, I saw him at work. This is before I went to law school, but I worked at a alternative to prison program. So I was, I was in the court rooms a bunch mm -hmm. and jerry um Shineland, judge Shinlin, um he would have a lot of zingers but my favorite that i remember from the 1990s was him yelling at a at a defendant who he thought was lying to him and he said don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining <laughs> oh so Ooh, that sounds like judge judy a little no it, it, i feel like they were like workshopping <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> She's like, "What should I do, hubby?" And I got, I got some thoughts for you. I'll work them out in the in the courtroom. I, I now, when you say this and you corrected yourself from uh, Jerry Shineland to Judge Shineland, do you is this in the parlance that it's it's even when they're not present, you were still to refer to them as Judge? Yeah, I mean, I I clerked for two judges after I went to law school, and one of them is in based in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. Her name is Denise Cote. And she, oh, I see her. I just saw her a couple of weeks ago. She always says for me to call her D, D E E. That's her, her nickname. I can't do it. She's <laughs> judge coat to me. I actually signed a copy of my book for her and she, I just couldn't write D E E. That's just not who she is. She is judge coat and she always will be. Well, that is a tremendous amount of respect that you have for, and I can understand it. I, you know, even people that are friends to my family that I've known their their parents forever, they're just Mr. and Mrs. Kane. It's just, it's what I would always say. I would never, exactly. ever consider calling them their first name because I don't know them that way. Exactly. Um, uh, exactly. But my children have no problem with the, like, they, they're like, whatever, I'll call them whatever they want me to call them. Um, 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 Joanna, I just love these three things. Thank you for relating it to something that marketers and other people might be able to uh, to relate to. It is a very good movie. I, I'm sorry, just from a enjoyment perspective, did you oh. like the movie? A plus, A plus, A plus. <laughs> a plus. And I and I don't mean to you know 
I don't mean to to uh, to dissuade people Diminish from the watching it. I mean, it's a classic. It's a classic. Totally. But you know, you got to look at it through through the lens of reality. So I now I'm going to switch gears. You know, you were just a fabulous, obviously a fabulous teacher and a fabulous communicator, um, and you won this wonderful prestigious award. What do you what do you what do you propose to young students and and uh, young adults who are who are entering this career how do you do your law professorship differently how do you inspire them because i love to inspire young people and i'm curious how how you do it well <clears throat> i don't want to say that i do something that's you know so wholly revolutionary that nobody else has has thought of it before but um, you know, my goal is really to meet students where they are and find ways to engage them and excite them. Um, I teach a class called Civil Procedure and like don't fall asleep just yet, even though it sounds incredibly boring. Most students. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. You were talking. It's a it's a it's a class that every first year law student has to take. And it's about basically the rules of bringing cases in court. And it has the worst reputation. People think it's going to be so boring, just full of rules that they have to remember. Right. And I try to phrase it and frame it as a game. So, and, you know, I start off the class and I say, look, three things you have to know, like just right. like this podcast, like the, podcast. Show. Like the right. show. Right. One um, lawsuits have rules. Two, lawyers play by the rules. And three, the person who can use the rules the best tends to win. And so if you're thinking of it not just as a boring list of rules, but as like strategy and that you need to figure out how to use these rules to help get the thing you want and, and understanding those rules actually does help get you the thing that you want. I think it's much more approachable to students. And I, I do that really in all of my classes. Let's think practically about what it is that you want. And you need to learn this stuff in order to get what you want. And I love working with students. I particularly love working with students who don't believe in themselves when I first start working with them, who are super smart, super engaging, but for whatever reason have lost or lacked the, the confidence mm -hmm. That's you know, right. to, to get what they want. And I, it's not that I love, you know, I, I don't, I don't love that about them, but what I love is being able to give them more confidence. And mm. I do that by having them talk in class and, and getting them to do, you know, mock oral arguments or, you know, show to them, prove to them that they do have what it takes. And one thing that's so exciting about being a law professor is that I get to see that transformation wow. year after year with crop after crop of students. I have so many students who are doing civil rights litigation, so many students who are sort of working in these areas that I've educated them about. And it is incredibly satisfying. It's sometimes hard to see how what we do moves the needle in, in any way. Teaching, you actually can see that needle move, and it's very satisfying. Well, I loved your three things. You did terrific on the show. Thank you for your insight about uh, the legal profession, about what is real and what is not real. And also, I think what's interesting is to think that we all have things that are perhaps made into movies that movies tend to highlight the high points. Thank you, Joanna, for agreeing to do this fun uh, little uh, exercise with me. My great pleasure. It was really fun. Good seeing you. Likewise.